Hi guys, in this episode of 3D Printer, we're going to be talking a little bit about using NinjaFlex. Uh, this was a bit of a challenge getting it to print on my printer. Uh, I used it a long time ago, but I made a couple of modifications to the printer at one point, and it didn't seem to quite want to extrude properly. So I had some failed prints here. Uh, part of my issue was I didn't actually know what the settings that I used before were. Uh, at one point something got reset and all my profiles for NinjaFlex and stuff got deleted, so some failed prints. Uh, I actually ended up using blue painter's tape on a sheet of glass for the uh, bed adhesion, which is not something that I've used in a very long time. Uh, I didn't feel like using the PEI sheet because I've heard things uh, that uh, NinjaFlex TPU filaments will tend to stick a little bit too hard to a PEI sheet and I wasn't getting it to stick well enough to the bare glass sheet, so I went ahead and just put uh, blue tape over the sheet of glass. And that actually seemed to uh, stick fairly well. The bed temperature was at 40 degrees, and the extruder temperature was all the way up at 245. And the reason why I had to set the temperature up so high is because this is what it did at 235. Uh, so another 10 degrees actually was the difference between printing and not printing. So as you may be able to guess here, I printed these little uh, octopus models. Now one of these I did with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, the other one I did with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And the reason why I did the 0.6 millimeter nozzle was because I thought maybe with a bigger nozzle it would be a little bit easier for the plastic to come through. Because what's happening is the filament is not actually wanting to go through the hot end. So the film is just kind of bending and going out of the way of the hot end and it's just getting all bunched up in the extruder. I thought maybe using a bigger nozzle would help because it wouldn't be as hard to push it through the uh, hot end if we did that, but uh, I did get it to work with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle as well, so seems to be uh, just fine either way. The other advantage with using the 0.6 millimeter nozzle is we can go up to uh, thicker layer heights and we can print a little bit faster because of that. So I think this was about a two hour print. This one was almost three and a half hour print with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So both of these turned out pretty good. Not real great, of course, because when you're using uh, the flexible materials, you don't use the retraction settings. So you have some hairs and things along the legs here. I might try to clean these up and uh, just see how good I can make them look. So this is the one with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. This one I used uh, a 0.3 millimeter layer height with the 0.6 millimeter uh, nozzle. So that worked out fairly well. Uh, one thing that I find kind of interesting about these is that if you squeeze them sideways like this, they're fairly flexible, but if you push down on the top, they're relatively stiff. So, and of course the legs uh, bend out like so. A lot of strings still on them. I haven't messed with these uh, too much in terms of cleanup or anything like that. All right, so this is the one with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. You can see there the layer lines. This is 0.2 millimeter layer height. This is just a little bit uh, nicer quality. Still got a lot of uh, rough bumps and edges and things like that on this. And of course the stringing on the legs down here um, isn't the greatest you can see there. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna clean these up a little bit. Also the uh, smaller nozzle is a little bit more flexible. So anyway, and again, it's kind of hard to push down from the uh, top though. So anyway, I'm gonna clean these up a little bit and I'll see uh, how good I can make them look. All right, so these are a little bit more cleaned up. Um, slightly less strings on them. These are a little bit difficult to actually uh, get everything off of because you kind of have to get in there with side cutters and straighten the leg out and try to uh, actually cut off all the little tiny uh, bumps and stuff on the plastic of the legs. But I will say the, uh, the body of the octopus actually does print quite nicely. I will say anything above where the legs start seems to be a lot nicer looking. Uh, the legs just have a lot of little blobs and stuff on them as the uh, printer does travel moves and uh, jumps between the legs. So anyway, these parts don't look uh, too bad there. You can see the eyes have some detail on them. So the 0.6 millimeter uh, nozzle one definitely had some worse uh, blobs on it. I've cleaned up uh, some of the really big ones. Anyway, the 0.6 millimeter nozzle one, of course, is going to print a little bit faster with a little bit worse 
quality, which when you're having to print at 10 millimeters a second, uh, getting slightly faster prints from the nozzle probably isn't the uh, worst thing ever. And of course, these are uh, extremely flexible prints, as you would imagine. So you can pretty much scrunch the whole thing up into your fist, which is kind of cool, especially for a 3D print when you would expect uh, something more along the lines of hard plastic. The 0.6 millimeter one is a little bit harder than the 0.4 millimeter one, but uh, they're both pretty flexible either way. And the legs will even stretch just a little bit there. Not as much as the raw filament does. So anyway, I thought these prints are pretty cool. I figured I'd share that with you guys. And uh, that's about it for now. See you in the next video. Bye.